This is a tale of two friends. A father and a daughter. On the journey of a lifetime to conquer the small mountains of Victoria. Join us on our journey across the unforgiving Australian landscape. Click the subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on an episode. What mountain will we climb next? Good morning, Brent. I have to go on an adventure today, so you have to look after the house. Okay? Good morning, everyone. It's me, Em. I'm back. And... I have just woken up, it's 7 in the morning, and I'm about to get in the car and go on a little day trip with Dad. Let's go. Okay, so it's about 30 minutes later and I've just made it to my car. It's about an hour drive to go meet up with Dad where he is, and then I think we've got about two hours on the road. Dad did tell me to make sure I left at 7 a.m. It's now just after 7.30. And he told me to make sure I've got plenty of snacks. I haven't been to the shop yet. So I'm gonna be a little bit late, Dad. Yellow? Let me guess, there was an earthquake. Dad. The dog ate your homework. Dad, I'm very close to the house. I had to get snacks. Pardon? I had to get snacks. Well, did you get me anything? No, you said we were organising our own snacks. Just a quick huntsman check. Oh, you ready? Pretty. <laughs> 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 Mount St. Gwynna is a two hour and 45 minute drive from the Melbourne CBD, located in Borbor National Park. We have been driving for about an hour now and we've just pulled into like a little picnic area. Um, I think we've got about an hour more of driving to do. We are here. And we're going up uh all the way up through here through erica and stuff to almost to the thompson dam then we're turning off and heading over here to where all of these um pellet marks are from someone with an air gun has shot it the map to the guina car park which is there and then we're going on this dotted line which is the walking track up to mount guina and we're pretty much going to look like these people. Probably not. Or these people. More likely. <laughs> or <laughs> these people. Yeah. Oh, Emily. Come on, let's go. We're in Erica, Emily. Beautiful little town. I have been here before. The great thing in these towns is you never see any traffic at all. Never any traffic not a car on the road uh, we're off to Mount St. Gwynna part of my bucket list tickety tick tick well oh yeah 27 k's to go what is it about Mount St. Gwynna well dad said there are a lot of coincidences that surround his interest in St. Gwynna he said he was researching ideas for a possible book to write and he came across a few references to St. Gwynia. The first coincidence is the fascination Dad has with the number 23. He mentions that this fascination started when he read the Illuminates trilogy by Robert Anton Wilson and Robert Shea, which apparently was one of the great conspiracy novels of all time. Dad mentions that Gwynia feast day is March 23rd and their house is number 23. And he says that there are many other 23s that also crop up, which I'm a little offended about that he forgot to mention that my birthday is on the 23rd. Anyway, we'll move on from that. He then goes on to say that most of the information about saints is sketchy at best, and he found a few different accounts of St. Gwynia. 
turns out Sanguinea had a sister and possibly more siblings, and in Ireland his name was Finger. Dad thought Finger changed his name to Gwynir, but it turns out that there was just a big language barrier between Ireland and Cornwall. From here, Dad found a few different stories of how Gwynir died. Basically, Dad has Cornish ancestry and Donna has Irish ancestry, and Dad found out that the land that they live on here in Victoria was once a part of a place called Gwynir's Hill, or Gwynafell, which he said is not a conspiracy. Anyway, then he found out there was a Mount St. Gwynir in Victoria and decided it must be on his bucket list. So that is why we are going to climb Mount St. Gwynna. If you don't understand any of this, it will all be in Dad's book. Uh, you can read it in my future book, uh, Winterfell. Coming to all good bookstores soon. All right, Emily, let's go. Let's get organized. We need hats. Have you got your hat? <laughs> I'll get my hat. And we need sunscreen. We are doing the eight kilometer grade four return hike. During the winter months, Mount St. Gwynna is popular for cross country skiing and tobogganing. The walk is filled with beautiful snow gums that are native to Australia. They have incredible multicolored bark. Just walking on the track to Mount St. Gwynna and I've lost dad. He's gone. Dad? Ah, oh, there he is. Recent storms, Emily, that knocked trees down around us at home. See you, Emily. What are you looking at? Emily, any wonder we're lost? Your map's upside down. Oh. See where we are now? <laughs> Still no. Oh well. <laughs> so the trail is meant to split into two directions, but. St. Quinto car park, two kilometres that way. We've come a long way. Mount St. Quinto, one kilometre up there. Oh, that's good. We went the long path. I don't mind that. It means at least we go back a different path. You know? Let's think that looks like some sort of a hand. Yeah, it does. As we start to approach the summit of Mount St. Gwynna that sits at 1,509 metres high, I think it really starts to sink in for Dad that he is about to tick off a bucket list walk. Emily. Ah. 
We've made it! Woohoo! Couldn't have done it with that because. Welcome to Mount St. Gwina. It's a bit of a mouthful to say, isn't it? It's good to be here, Poss. This is on my bucket list. Good to be here with you. Tick. Ah. We're at um, 1,509 metres above sea level. Wow. So I'm not sure how high Borbor is, but we'll find out. Um, someone will be able to tell us. It'll be on a map. Um, uh, so in the same mountain range and uh, over just there you can see in the distance looking across uh, Lake Thompson. It's all small snow gums and uh, lots of beautiful plants. You can tell it is covered with snow for most of winter. It's a great view. Easy beautiful enough view. walk. Mm, yeah, it's a good walk. Yep. Steep at first, but then Flat easy down. going after that. Yep. And really nice, beautiful, the snow gums, the bark, and um, yeah, everything about the place is fantastic, isn't it? And there's a Coke machine on the top of the mountain. <laughs> there's not. <laughs> Wasn't there? Uh, no, there isn't. But make sure you put your name in the visitor's book, which is on the, the um, entry, the mound there. Uh, I'll ride at the peak. Let us know how you go writing your name down. Mm. Alright, nothing else. Let's go. Alright, just one more thing, I promise. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Emma Around the Globe. If you did enjoy it, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and send the video to a friend who you think might enjoy it too. If you have any recommendations or requests of walks Dad and I should go do in Victoria, then let me know in the comments down below or message me on Instagram at Emma Around the Globe. We'll see you in the next one. Sorry, one sec. Just a big cheesy grim. Please, for me. I can't do that. It's not me. Oh, that's not me. <laughs>